I've made a lot of knobs in my life, most of them using T-nuts. And while they do work, I've run into enough problems with them that I've stopped relying on them. Today we're gonna to look at two better options, but we'll also talk about why T-nuts might not be the go-to solution anymore as we make knobs make sense. You've probably seen these. Pre-packaged plastic knobs with T-bolts. I picked up a few myself, but it's hard to beat the convenience when you're deep in a project. 12 bucks for six knobs or two bucks each. What a deal. And they even come with bolts, which helps justify the price. But the problem is you're locked into one size. This pack is a 5 16 So if I need just one quarter inch knob, I've got to buy an entire second set. If you can buy them locally, you're lucky, but me, it's a few days wait. And then there's the bolt sizes that come with the knobs. They give you two three and a half, two two and a half, two one and a half, and two one inch. So if you're doing something with T-Tracks and you need four three and a half inch bolts, that's another wait. And that's the problem with buying in packs. You're stuck with general needs, not your specific needs. If I can make knobs that fit my needs and do it fast for less money, why would I ever settle for overpriced packs. And I'm not talking about standard sizes. If I've got a bolt that needs a knob or a nut that needs a studded knob, I can make it. Every size, every pitch, every thread, it's all at my fingertips. I'm not stuck waiting on what some company decided to sell this month. The whole hardware aisle is open to me. That's what pushed me back into making my own knobs and saving that money for longer T-bolts that I can cut down to whatever size that I need. But I'm not going back to T-nuts and here's why. I've stocked so many T-nuts in the past because I use them so often for making knobs. To make a knob with these, you need to drill a hole for the barrel. You can't hammer them straight in, there's a bend risk with the tines. So you slide it into a hole, give it a few taps, then drill out the marks the tines left. Finally, you have to add epoxy to hold it all together. So what turned me against them? The biggest problem with these guys is they only work in one direction. I've got a T-nut on the bottom of this knob. This is not gonna work, it'll pull out because you wanna have the T-nut in the opposite direction pulling against whatever you're tightening to. In this situation, I'll end up just pulling the tine out eventually. Torque's not as big of a problem, but it's still there. You're relying on epoxy and three or four of these bent prongs, so with enough pressure, you can pull it loose. It doesn't happen every time, but I've had it happen. It's annoying. And then there's the time. Between the drilling, the fitment, the hammering it, and waiting for the epoxy to cure, it can take up to a day just to make a knob. It works, but it's clunky and we can do better with less. If I'm gonna make a knob, my favorite method now is trapping a square knot between two blocks of wood in a lap joint. It's simple, solid, and you can scale it up for pretty much any size you want. This is my most reliable method when I want a bulletproof knob. A square nut trapped in a lap joint. But why a square nut and not a hex nut? In geometry, every time you add a new point to a shape, the greater the chance for that shape to pivot or twist. The most difficult shape to turn would be a triangle, but mechanically, that would be tricky to use in a knob. A square is the next best thing with only four points. If we jump up to six points, we're making twisting much easier. A shape with 100 points is basically a circle and spins freely. This matters because every bit of torque we apply to the outer points of our knob translates into enormous twisting leverage on the nuts. But try this yourself, take a dowel and a Couple nuts. I'll jam the dowel right into the nut. And I'll do that with a hex nut as well. I'll add another nut on the other side. Now when you go to roll it, you'll notice it is very difficult to roll the square one. But if we switch over to the hex, and it's not a problem at all to move it, you'll feel it. Square nuts are more difficult to twist over hex nuts. But as we add more points and get closer to a circle, there's much less resistance. And cutting a square hole is so much easier than trying to shape six angled walls. A forcer bit, quick clean up with a chisel, and you're done. But unless you're doing serious clamping, this method, while my favorite, isn't always necessary. On my quad vise, I went with it because I wanted those handles to pull tight, tight enough to bend wood flat if I needed to. And beyond clamping pressure, square nuts give you options. Imperial or metric, coarse or fine thread, you can find them. I used a 5.8 square nut for the vise, which I found locally without any problems. And you can go all the way down to number 440. Try doing that with the T-nuts, but there are trade-offs. It does take time to make. You'll need the right forcer bit, a chisel to square the hole, and glue time to sandwich the nut in the lap joint. But unlike a T-nut, there's no epoxy, and you can usually use the knob within 30 minutes. Also, the larger the nut, the chunkier the knob. Your handle width is gonna get larger as your square nut gets larger. If you really need a quick knob and don't want to make a lap joint, the next option is to go with a threaded insert. These are little metal sleeves that screw directly into the hardwood. 
I used to write these off because I was worried that the same twisting that went into inserting them into your stock would cause them to untwist when using them. But I found that they hold reasonably well, as long as you're not trying to torque it like a, a lug on a pickup truck. Oh, and if you do go this route, stick with the kind that have these really deep threads in them. Some are meant to be hammered in, and some rely on epoxy. Both of these have both failed me, and they are definitely not worth it. What I like about these is how fast they are. They're fast because you only need one thing, a hole. I've got a square block of wood here. Let's turn it into a knob really fast. Really, the only thing that makes these difficult is making sure that they're centered before twisting them in, very much like adding threads to a metal hole. And just like adding threads to a hole, we'll use a drill press to make it slide in. Now, the packs that I bought off of Amazon came with a hex head wrench. So my trick is to cut a piece of this off. The piece that I cut off of this needs to be long enough that it'll fit in a drill press. With this cut down, I can put it in the chuck. And now I'll add the threaded insert and I'll press it down into it. And once we get it started, we can bring it back to the vise and twist it in. And there it is, a very cumbersome knob, but very quick, very fast, and very easy to put together. So yeah, making your own knob saves money, sure. But what really sets these apart is control. You choose the size, you choose the thread, coarse, fine, metric, whatever fits your build. You're not stuck with it, whatever came in a hardware pack. You're building it for your jig, your way. And that's the part that makes it worth doing. And here they are, three different knob types side by side. I've got a full breakdown on my second channel where I dive deeper into each one, including things like adding a neck or shaft to a knob and why it actually matters. You'll see that video pop up at the end. Now I'm going out on a limb here, but I thought, why not test all three? Let's throw some real force on these and see what happens. I've got a bolt in my vise. I've jammed a couple nuts together. I'm gonna add a washer on the top. My first one's a T-nut and we're gonna see if I can break the T-nut. Now I'm actually a little bit surprised as I was able to break the bolt. I wasn't expecting that. This held up far better than I thought it would, but let's move on to the lap joint. I was able to break this one off just like the other one. So I'm pretty impressed with this, but let's go ahead and try the threaded insert. And just like I thought with enough pressure, you're just pulling it back out. Threaded inserts are great for things that don't require a lot of pressure, but they do pull out. Thank you friends for stopping by. I'm curious, what do you do when you need to make a knob? Or do you just bite the bullet and buy a pre-made one? If you've never made a knob before, give it a try. I think you'll be surprised. A huge thank you to my patrons who help keep this work going. If you'd like to be a part of the team or just throw a tip in the jar, there's a link down in the description. And remember to keep making things.